On this week's breaking news, Star Wars is getting a dark side. The Bricklink program has a few contests and their latest pricing has been released and some Fortnite Star Wars updates. That and more on this week's breaking news. Now we're all limited by horizontal surfaces. Lego takes up a lot of that. So how are you going to solve that issue? Do you leave it there or deconstruct it and find other places? Or could you mount it to the wall? I personally had the Technic Supercar, the Bugatti Chiron, taking up a lot of space. So I found 11 Mark com where you can have a fully mounted vertical Bugatti with a lovely background of the Bugatti racing stripe with the logo and Lego logo. There are two different frames, one that's lit and one that is not. And that's not the only Lego set that you can have mounted. There are many, many options. So I recommend you head over to 11mark.com and use the code back to brick, which gives you a 10% discount on all of their frames, as well as the sets that they also produce. So instead of taking up so much horizontal space, take that Lego set and go vertical. Again, that's 11mark.com and use the code back to brick to save 10% on your order. Lego. 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 Breaking news. Breaking news. Hey, everybody. Breaking welcome news. back to Back to Brick. Breaking I'm your host, Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow AFOLs about their Lego designs and we get down to the breaking news to talk about all things Lego has been up to for the past week. Thank you all for tuning into the podcast. As always, if you're not subscribed, I would recommend you do so so you can keep up to date on all the latest Lego news as well as what's happening in the Lego community. If you want to be a big supporter of the podcast, you can join our Patreon and become a Lego stud. I want to call out my supporters, Belfont Brick Studio, Ryan Moore. Franco Portelli, Jimmy Tucker, Ryan S., David Matthew Vander Bogart, Paul Snellen, and Lee Jackson. Thank you so much for being supporters of the podcast. They get the podcast early with no ads, and they get shout outs as well as some great sets that I built. One that I just finished is a Bluey set, it is um, the title card pretty much of the house. And I'm very excited to have finished it. I did it on Studio and I've been uploading kind of time lapses of my build process over on YouTube so you can kind of see some of the process of building. And of course, there are some parts that I didn't just kind of getting into the swing of it and well, of course, forgetting. I did build one section of nine for my secret large build and gluing it is always fun. It takes far more time than it should, but it looks really good and I'm very excited to continue building onto it and just finding out my niche for YouTube. I think a lot of people want to see studio, so I might do a lot more tutorials as well as builds through there. So stay tuned as the YouTube continues to expand. But that's it. And after the breaking news, we're of course going to do our set review set 21056, the architecture series Taj Mahal, and then our rebrickable mock review. It's going to be the DeLorean, the time machine version two by fire fabric. So stay tuned for those after the breaking news. All right, let's get into this week's breaking news. Speaking of architecture sets, we have the newest and largest of the LEGO architecture series, Notre Dame de Paris. Set 21061. It has 4,383 pieces and rated at 18 plus, and it'll be for sale at 230 US dollars. It is already available for pre order so you can go over there and do that. I will actually post the link in the description. And it is a very impressive model. It has all the classic features that we know. We have the major buttresses all the way around. We have the central spire and, of course, the two main cathedral towers in the front. The set itself is kind of bland at only tan. I mean, there's some dark brown, or excuse me, dark bluish gray, and the trees around it, but just look at a lot of tan pieces. The inside does have uh, the marble flooring with tiling of uh, black and white, but you're not going to see it. It's going to be completely hidden unless you want to remove the whole model at the top or try to figure out an expansion way, which I wish they would kind of figure out how to do, maybe raise and lower it with like a hydraulic or something. Or just like a basic crank would be uh, interesting to do because you build all that stuff in this inside and you don't get to see it. You can remove just the top uh, roof piece and look through the rafters or you can remove the whole upper section of it. There's some interesting building techniques as they use candles, sticks in tan to make the columns and the buttress pieces for the water to kind of flow down. And it does have a wheel section to have the 
um, stained glass area, but they didn't really put in any stained glass. And I, I think that is a missed opportunity to have some of that iconic coloring, at least in that section, even if it is that small. And at $230 and 4,300 pieces, it's pretty good price point if you want a lot of tan pieces. And this set will be released on June 1st. A Lego idea set has been revealed. This is 21349 Tuxedo Cat. It was an idea set where it was a Siamese cat, so it's a little different than what we voted for. So I'm, I think the fan base is a little surprised that they did this because we didn't vote for this cat. We voted for another cat. It is 710 pieces and an 18 plus rating and will come at a cost of $100. So that's a pretty good price point because it's mostly simple bricks with the cat kind of standing up, sitting on its back legs in black and white. It is part of the ideas line. So people who collect this are going to definitely want to get this. The eyes, you can change the color from a goldish to a blue. The head does swivel and you can change the mouth from opened or closed. It's interesting. I mean, I think it's one of their lowest on the ideas range. I also didn't really understand why they picked this one as the ideas set, because there were so many other great ones and not that many IP for this round. So just very strange. It's, it's definitely not on my list. If I could change it to like a Calico cat uh, from our other cat or um, uh, just a standard American with orange and white, definitely something that I do, but this is just too basic for me to enjoy. An art series set was revealed as well. This one's the Mona Lisa, and it's 31213. It has 1,503 pieces rated 18 plus again, and will cost $100. And it is available for pre-order, so you can go over to the link in the description for lego.com, and it will be pushed back. It was supposed to be released on June 1st, but it's going to get pushed all the way to October 1st. No idea why. That's a pretty crazy extension, and I'm wondering if it's based on the manufacturing process for some of these bricks, because there are a lot of little colors, but the entire frame is gold, because that is the iconic frame from the Mona Lisa. The face is very interesting. The eyebrows, or at least the brow line, is, well, very strange. The hands and the body itself don't look that bad. It's similar to the Spider-Man set where it is three-dimensional to some degree, not completely, so that you can get those different layerings. I did this the same in the Bluey set so that you could have the different depths to it as well. The you can't you can't tell if she's smiling or not so that's kind of iconic to it and people will probably try to fix the face in different ways to have it more of the way the actual Mona Lisa looks but it's not a bad set and if you really enjoy the classical art series that they're doing this is a great one to put on your wall and if you put it far enough away people are going to wonder if it actually is Lego or not so stay tuned for that as it is all the way out in October 1st. Lego is rebuilding a galaxy far, far away. Their new limited series, which is a four-part series called Lego Star Wars Rebuild the Galaxy, is uh, kind of a wave going through the, the galaxy and rearranging all the bricks to be completely different, where we get something we've all been theorizing for years since The Phantom Menace, that Jar Jar is actually a Sith Lord. We will be getting him as a minifigure, and of course, so many other different changes. We're gonna get a Dark Millennium Falcon. We're gonna get an X-Wing TIE Fighter. There are so many different changes that they're doing where, honestly, this is one of the most creative things they've done with Star Wars since the beginning in 20, or, well, in 25 years. And having Jedi Bob be the main character to hunt down and find all these, which is iconic to the Lego line, is so exciting to have him be brought to the forefront because he was just a Jedi. We didn't have a name. He was just thrown into the uh, Republic gunship set at the first one they released, and now he's <laughs> taking center stage for this series. I'm excited to see this. This will be over on Disney+. Plus. It is coming in September. No official day of release, but four-part series for Lego Star Wars is big because they usually only do like the holiday specials and their smaller TV shows that we've seen are like the uh, the Young Jedi and what else? Um, I don't actually think that's Lego. They just have Lego for it. So this will be really cool seeing the characters we know that are good actually turn bad and vice versa. And apparently there's going to be a lot of sets for this. Getting a TIE fighter, uh, a X-Wing TIE fighter and a and X-Wing... 
vice versa. I, it's going to be flip-flopped, of course, in a dark Millennium Falcon, which is going to be highly collectible, and Bob Jedi Bob's Starfighter. Those are going to be super cool, very out there, creative designs that I think they were just given the freedom to design and do what they wanted for it. So these will be really cool, and I can't wait to see them come probably early August, J J uh, July. Um, maybe we'll even get the reveal in June because they like to release it just before they release in September. Amazon Prime Gaming is giving away a Star Wars video game. You will be able to get LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars as free thanks to Prime Gaming. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you can actually go over and get this free game up until June 5th. It is the uh, Star Wars Episode 3, The Clone Wars PC game that once you, if you want to get it, you go over to Prime Gaming homepage, visit the gaming section, and select that specific game, follow the instructions to download it for free. Right now it is only PC, so if you do not have a PC, you can get an emulator to either do it or go out and buy a PC or something or play on someone's. I only have Mac, so I have to do emulator for it, but it, I mean, it's free. Why not? I've actually never played LEGO Star Wars 3, played 1 and 2, and the Skywalker Saga, so this could be a fun addition to the collection to do a nice playthrough for it. So definitely a fun way to get a free video game, and of course, being Star Wars, it's going to be an awesome time. LEGO bricks have been used for prototyping of all kinds of things, from uh, biometric systems to printing houses, and so why not use it for cars? One of the designers, Nicholas Fremont, who is part of the Renault family, which is, well, the Renault uh, car industry, actually took his holiday in 2010 to design a brand new transmission out of Lego. He pieced together some of the Lego pieces from the Technic line to create an entirely new system that would soon become the E-Tech hybrid system. Through the different pieces, he created this new engine that, well, it created instead of a typical friction clutch of traditional automatic transmissions, it created a dog clutch. Now, you might be wondering why is it called a dog clutch? And I was wondering the same. And apparently it's derived from how opposing teeth of the clutch interlock like a dog's jaw. This type of coupling is also very fast to engage and disengage and it allows the E-Tech transmission to quickly s select from the one of 15 operating combinations, including four gears for the engine and two gears for the drive motor. Most importantly, it isn't another CVT, which I don't really know what a CVT is, but this, um, this little build that he did is called the Lego Loco Disco Box. And having this is a way that they could create this hybrid engine where they could switch between the, the different sections of the gear system from something that's high power to something low powered, more energy efficient. And they did debut it at the uh, Geneva Auto Show in 2019 as the Lego model and continued to build it into their latest Renault Austral e -Tech which is um, a 45,000 SUV that has the transmission system, which is so cool having Lego build something. Not only have we seen in Technic cars before, but now they've actually put it in a real vehicle based on that design. But first off, congratulations for figuring out gear systems because I have no idea how that works and building an entirely new one for a real life vehicle is crazy enough. So congratulations, really cool. Hopefully we see similar things like that and That'd be cool if they put the instructions up so you could build and understand that dog clutch as well on your own. Another a Lego Star Wars set has been revealed with a collectible minifigure for the 25th anniversary. This one has been highly anticipated. It is Cal Kestis from the Jedi Fallen Order series in minifigure form. Now, he doesn't have his little pal, and he doesn't have a poncho, so people are probably going to buy those separately because they have done the little guy before, but not, I don't know if they've done a poncho. I think they have. You, I mean, there's definitely something out there. But it comes to, well, it comes with, <laughs> it should be the opposite way around, a $160 Star Destroyer. It's 1,555 pieces and comes with six other minifigures 
Darth Vader, an Imperial officer, well, a few of them, and a couple stormtroopers as well, because it's a play scale Star Destroyer. So it does have a little opening where you can hold a handle so you can move it around, and the interior does open up so you have different uh, sections that you can view from um, the bridge where Darth Vader is walking around on. They've got a hologram or a different section, and I don't know if it has Darth Vader's room like the previous one did, but it's been a while since we've had a playscale Star Destroyer, and I think it looks great. Having these figures also is highly enticing, uh, and then you can add it to a playscale style set because a lot of people like to do this instead of just having the displays, they like to play with their Lego, go figure. So that's a fun addition, especially the Cal Kestis figure, which I know will be highly collectible since it's only in this set as of right now. LEGO Fortnite continues to make these impressive improvements and different updates to include so many different LEGO IPs from, well, I don't think they've put Adventures in there yet, or Rock Raiders, but, or any of the other ones. Bionicle would be interesting if they did that, kind of like skins, but Star Wars and different characters that you can build. And a lot of people have, you know, harken this back to some of the other older games, such as Lego Island, which was a design where you could build different cities, have different characters doing different jobs and uh, operations. So having Lego kind of integrate this with Fortnite would be awesome as a upgraded version of what we know from Lego Island. It's been 17 years since the game came out. And it was always something that was really enticing for people just to kind of go out and do their own thing, which is exactly what Fortnite does. So maybe they'll come out with a mod that has an update with this is Lego Island and have some different features to it that adds on to it. So for those classic Lego video game lovers, Fortnite might be your best entry to get back into the game of Lego Island. The legendary creator of Metal Gear Solid, Hideo Kojima, has talked about his love for video games and Lego, and he's now released, uh, he's got a backlog now. He's had a lot of Lego sets that he purchased, but in the addition, he's gone and had a wonderful time for May the 4th, which I hope all of you did as well, with um, the Ultimate Collector Series ATAT, the uh, Pac-Man said the Ornithopter and a few others just kind of sitting around as he showed on Twitter that yeah I've got uh, I've got a backlog of Lego sets that's so I'm I'm wondering if he continues to expand or how many he already has that he's built but he's probably really busy as they continue to create more and more games but guess what we all have backlogs some really large some small so don't feel bad because uh, everyone's busy and just you'll get around to it eventually and so will I. The latest addition to Fortnite, the Star Wars area, has expanded to new adventures. Fortnite Rebel Adventures quests, there's, let's see, a total of six. Collect a micro bino uh, binoculars from Rebel Captain, build a Rebel workbench, talk to Rebel Wookiee uh, Ranger Grolf. Different ones, of course, built with different studs uh, that you'd have to build. But then you can also purchase some, que uh, get some quests talk to rebel captain you get 5000 xp for that travel and intercept the rebel village square and interact with excuse me not intercept a fight it can be interesting to intercept a square um there's survival weekly quests build a rebel guide build 220 studs collect uh plast plastoids 220 studs so definitely some fun additions that you can add on to your just adventure. There are a lot of different stud requirements, so I don't know how you collect those as I've not played Fortnite yet. You probably can purchase them because that's exactly how these games always work. It just brings you back to the game to do these different quests, similar to any video game, to engage on those side quests, main quests, whatever you want to do, or just go out and do some sandbox time and have a... Time just playing with Star Wars Lego in the Fortnite universe. The Bricklink Designer Program is having a few different events go on. One in particular is their Series 2 mini build competition. So the Series 2 sets have been officially released with their pricing, which we'll get into here in the next segment. But you can go and build these in a mini scale. And if you were to win, you actually would get one of these sets of your choice. There are a total of five because that's how the system works. And you can continue to build from now until the 29th and enter them. Uh, you must have between 10 and 300 pieces total. 
There are eight studs length, width, or height. That's as far as you can uh, go. So it's pretty small. And the Bricklink Designer Program, it, you have to use, well, you don't have to, but for bonus points, you use Series 5 Palette. And that is um, just to add to it. And if you want, you can build them in real life with Lego bricks to have another little bonus. And I built one. I built the mushroom house. So the five you can build is the mushroom house, the ocean house, logging railway, ominous aisle, and brick across a train station. So those are all fun things to build. I'll put the link in the description of the one that I built. So if you go and like them, the more likes, the more likely they are to either get voted as higher for the judges to rate and uh, I would really appreciate it. it'd be really fun you can I want you to build yours too if you have them that you want me to vote and like let me know and I'll do the same so it's fun just a little challenge and you can do it over the next couple weeks the official pricing for the Bricklink Designer Program Series 2 sets was revealed. The Mushroom House totaling 964 pieces will come at a cost of $90. The Ocean House at 2,207 pieces will be $200. The Logging Railway is 2,731 pieces at $210. The Ominous Isle is 2,809 pieces at $240. And the Brick Cross Train Station is 3,050 pieces at $280. I will say that they are more comparable pricing than the first round, and I think that's because they listened, and a lot of the pieces are pretty basic, so why would they charge so much? And so there are round 10 cents per piece, which is the classic standard for a Lego set. So they're definitely going to be a fun pre-order situation because they're, they're still expensive, but not outrageous. There's nothing less than a 1,000 pieces, which is a challenge there because, well... That means exactly what I said. The pricing is still high. One under $100. The rest are $200 and up from there. I really enjoy a few of them. I will be getting at least two. But the pre-orders go on June set, excuse me, June 6th, the day before my birthday. So if anyone wants to get me for my birthday, I would totally appreciate it. And it will be at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Set your calendars and enjoy the wait and the crashing of the site and hopefully you get the sets that you want as they'll do the pre-orders up to i believe 10,000 sets after that they are sold out and you'll have to go onto ebay and buy them for at least four times the price that you would pay for here so they're expensive they look cool this is series two and there's going to be more and they've already gone up through series four and series five soon as I was saying, Series 5 is starting here soon. On May 13th through May 24th, you can submit your ideas for Series 5. You will have to use Studio to create a BrickLink palette, or the studio, the studio Series 5 palette to create your sets. And you'll have to build them, create instructions, and then you can submit them. And if you submit them early enough, if there's corrections that need made, you can go and do that. So if you already have builds ready to go, make sure that you're ready to have a blurb about what it is, the design process and all that, and those instructions ready to go. So you have three days left to prep, and then you can still build them through the time period. Just make sure you submit it before May 24th. Lego Ideas is updating their terms of service. Now, I was a little worried that they would increase from the 10,000 votes needed to get support, but they have just changed the age. So starting June 4th this year, you'll have to be at least 16 years old instead of 13 to submit a, for your profile. And this change is, um, I don't really understand why overall. I mean, 13 is pretty young. I actually didn't know the age range for that. I thought you had to be at least 16 or around that age to have the submissions done. I think it's based on legal sense of when, you know, you're turning over your ideas and, you know, at 13, it's, it's not likely you're going to read the fine print. I mean, I'm 31 and I'm not really reading the fine print either, but that is their latest terms update. Hopefully we won't see any major updates from here. That would definitely affect your submissions. Hopefully, um, I mean, they're probably going to increase the voting for, um, from 10 to at least 15,000 here in the next year. That's my expectation. Lego is continuing to encourage their play and their outreach. So this one's out of this world, free interactive creative workshops. 
And at select stores, there's going to be creative workshops on June 22nd and 23rd. And it's stated that these young creators will get the ability to build their own postcards and assistance from Lego Store Associates. Tickets are free, but advanced registration is required. You can do that over at lego.com slash creative workshops, which I will post in the description so you can go and do that. There's also going to be some online workshops hosted by the space co uh, communicator Alexandra Doton, aka Astro Alexandria. And they'll show different creations and how you can decorate your home, including the sun, planets, and rocket pen pot. And you can actually go and do that now over at the same website that I just said before. As they continue to expand for children to continue to create, and it's all about space this summer, this is a fun way to engage in the younger community to go out and build. Now, I'm going to say that adults probably can't participate unless they have children. So go out and find a niece, nephew friends kid and take them so you can also have a fun engaging experience postcard is a fun idea i always liked their postcards because it it gives a sense of where you're traveling so people can create a different planet on the postcards or they're just in outer space on a space shuttle who knows creativity is out there and continue to go out of this world for this cool workshop experience this summer Bumblebees are very intelligent insects. If you know some about them, they're actually ways that they can dance to point to their brothers in the direction of where they can get pollen and create the honey and nectar that they need to continue to sustain the colony. And there actually was a study done using Lego to talk about hives actually create a hive mind or cooperative engagement. The study was done at the University of Oulu in Finland by the Royal Science B, and they presented in a journal entry talking about how they created two different structures to show how bees can cooperate to achieve a goal. One was to simultaneously push a Lego block in the middle of an arena, or to simultaneously push a door at the end of a transparent double tunnel to gain access to reward nectar. It showed that the different bees would actually learn from each other, trying to uh, push the door open if they didn't. The, the, I mean, it took time because as one is pushing, the others might be going around and trying to figure it out. And slowly but surely, they, they learned how to open that door. Dr. Locallo, uh, who was part of the uh, science initiative, says our findings show for the first time that bumblebees can learn to solve novel cooperative tasks outside the hive. But the coolest part of this work is that it clearly demonstrates the bumblebees cooperate in socially influenced and not just driven by individual efforts. So cool. I, I love the, I mean, bumblebees are really cool. We are thinking about getting our own hive here on our property and enjoying, you know, having the, the culture of well, bees and understanding how that cooperation can not only be done in a hive, but with people and with Lego and enjoying the aspect of having that social building uh, effort together to achieve the goal of either building a set or just enjoying the fun of Lego. Dreams Season 2 is going to be airing on May 17th with a first few episodes for their two-part series for Season 2. Season 2 of Dreams is introducing a brand new villain, the Neverwitch, and the high school pals must stop the Neverwitch as she wields her powers to steal dreams and threaten Dream World. There's the latest Lego sets that we've seen, so they're going to be integral parts of the new uh, Season 2. And I've never watched it, but I've only heard good things about the Lego Dreams line and the creativity that goes behind the Dream World. So you can enjoy Season 2 and Season 1 of Dreams that'll be on YouTube come May 17th. Another Lego video game is on the way, and the official release date for the Lego Hill Climb Adventures. It's going to be on May 30th, where you'll get it on Android and iOS. There's free registration that's already open now. And in a bid to incentivize the mobile equivalent for pre-orders, Fingersoft promises the more registrations will mean better rewards during the game's opening week. The whole point of it is to have vehicles running through different areas and uh, peaks, valleys, performing tricks, collecting studs. So any kind of hill climb system that you've done before a game, just now expect it in Lego form. So you can play that on your phone come May 30th. 
it's a little bit slow now that we're in the off season of the NFL. And that doesn't mean that people are relaxing. We've got a lot of the players, of course, training and being prepared for the beginning of the season come the end of this summer. And of course, why not do some uh, interactive stop motion with Lego? The Chiefs actually teamed up with the University of Tennessee Volunteer Football Program, and they created this interesting stop motion of the rookie Kamal Hedden and Trey Smith in Lego. And they posted over on X showing the interaction of the game and having them play football together. It, it's cool. I mean, it's a stop motion if you're into the NFL football area of just, you know, sports, go sports, then you will probably enjoy this little stop motion clip. There is a lot of Lego theft out there, and this one is just crazy. There was a kid's birthday party, and this guy walks into the birthday party, sees a Lego set on the table, and decides, let me steal it. In an $800 set, he decided that that was the best way to, well, get a Lego set, I guess, stealing it right from under a kid's birthday party. I hope they catch him. They have some video footage of him driving away as well as his license plate. So people, stop stealing Lego. And especially from a kid's birthday party. That's like the scum of the earth to do something like that. It, ugh, disgusting. So hopefully they, he is uh, captured and, uh, well, thrown in jail. Lego's newest reveal as of yesterday was the Lego Icon Set 10334 Retro Radio. Now, it's a small handheld style radio that has the little dials that you can move to find the different station, and it has some cool technic aspects to it. It's a beautiful color, too. It's in an aqua feature. What I love about it is you can actually open it up and see the inside, but what's cool overall is it does have a new sound brick similar to what they have in the sorting hat so of course you had to have it in another set it's smaller and it does have some little um, sections to it that uh, well hopefully you can add different radio pieces or it'd be cool if you had recordings to it but it comes at a cost of a hundred dollars and will be released on june 1st really awesome i love the detailing and the color of course and yeah, just to add another sound break to your collection, not for, well, for a much more reasonable price than I think the sorting hat. And a final bit of news for the day, 48 projects have qualified for the second round of 2024 Lego Ideas. There are quite a few that are definitely really interesting to me. One specifically is Spirited Away would be a really fun one. They've got Riverboat, they've got Interstellar, they've got... Um, some architecture sets and the planetary mobile system, which is 99.9% .9 accurate. I think this is its third time hitting 10,000 votes. I, I still think it's not going to get selected because they just did the sun, earth, and moon in a Technic series. But it is space summer, um, but these won't be announced until a September 2nd. So if you want to go and check them out, they're all on Lego Ideas. So you can see which ones were selected and fingers crossed for which one you'd want to see made. And that's our breaking news this week. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. As always, if you want, you can also go subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're climbing. I'm at over 800 followers or subscribers on YouTube, and I'm trying to hit 1,000 by June 7th. So I'd love your support in that. You can check out all the little videos that I've done, and I'll continue to add throughout the coming days, weeks, and years, of course, and continue to subscribe to the podcast. And now we're going to move into our set review. As I said, today's set is set 21056, the LEGO Archite Architecture Line Taj Mahal. It's an 18 plus set. It has 2,022 pieces. You'll get 780 insider's points. And the dimensions, it's 8 inches high, 10 inches wide, and 10 inches deep. And it does have ratings of 52 at 4.5 stars and comes at a cost of $120. And so you're looking at just under um, 10 cents a piece for that. It does have pretty basic uh, bricks to it, but I will say that I love this model for the fact that it's small. At only uh, 10 by 10, it's far smaller than the Taj Mahal that they've done twice before at the larger scale architecture builds or icon builds. Uh, I actually don't know what they've na they named them before. 
And this has extreme detailing of it with the uh, different colored roof, which is the dark orange and the tiled floors, which is the one by ones that kind of wrap all the way around the structure. And of course, the main uh, dome section, which I think they did really well to create that uh, clean feature to it and having the small, uh, small ones all around it. The set actually does open. You can take the center section out as well as the atrium section and you can look inside where they have, um, well, remember it's a pretty much a mausoleum. So there is just the coffins in the center section. You can look through the doorways and see it and it isn't, uh, it's, I guess it's not repetitive building, but they're pretty similar and it's, it's white most of it. I love the architecture line and as this set is retiring this year, you're going to want to get it if you love the Taj Mahal and have uh, an ideal space for something smaller than, well, maybe the Notre Dame Cathedral or uh, the the other large scale architecture sets. So highly recommend this at $120. It's not a bad price. If you ever want to resell uh, as it retires, it's probably going to go for a good bit because it's an architecture set. I just, uh, I love it. It's really fun and you can become your own Lego architect. Now we'll move into our rubricable mock review. And this one is the DeLorean Time Machine version two by Fire Fabric. This is a DeLorean build made in the Speed Champion scale. So you do have a side-by-side -side where you can fit Marty and Doc in the DeLorean. Now, he's done another DeLorean, which is the standard, uh, just regular DeLorean that you might see driving around if they are driving around. But this one has the um, time machine styling to it. So it does have cables running around it. It has the back section with the large engines, the flux capacitor, and you can even modify the wheels to have them rotate upside down in the flying mode of the DeLorean. The gullwing doors do happen. You can get Marty and Doc if you want. And Marty has a little camera as well as Doc's dog, which that's, those are cool additions if you'd like. It's only 421 pieces and it'll cost you $6, 6.5 euros. So it's not super expensive. And you can have a wonderful scaled DeLorean instead of the large scale. Or if you missed out on the Lego Ideas one, just, I mean, that was years ago. I think it is much better because it does have uh, much better detailing and design. And having the features of the, well, the Time Machine version, I think is just super cool. And everybody loves the Speed Champion scale. You can actually check it out on YouTube as well. I would, I would get this. I think I, <laughs> I'm going to have to purchase this myself because the scaling is great. You can even add like the different wheels to have it on the railroad tracks and just enjoy from uh, Back to the Future 2 and 3. So yeah, if you're a big DeLorean fan and Back to the Future, this is set for you. All right, everyone, and that is the end of this week's podcast. Come back next week for a new edition for the Breaking News. I'll leave you as I always do. Get creative, get out there, and go build something.